All right, welcome back to The Devil in Detail, the Grendel Reread Podcast. I'm Eli. I'm Ben. It's our 63rd episode. We have kind of a special one right now. We're going to do a short Wigan story from uh, Atomica's A1 anthology. And then we're going to talk about the Kamiko Black Book and, uh, and sort of prep for a very special episode next week. Yeah. Before we get too much into it, Eli, how was your week? Ooh, my week has been very good uh, within the last couple of days. Um, well, one thing, let's see, the Weenzine second print has arrived. And so I got my order started shipping out for that. It looks better, as I said before, now with less grammatical errors. Uh, and um, I also, uh, we got two new cats yesterday, two new little black cat kittens god they're beautiful uh renzo and rooster we were um gonna name it a different name but then on the way there we were like back and forth and then allison changes rooster came on which is one of our favorite songs and uh one of shay's favorite songs and so she was like what about rooster and i was like you know now all the time i can be like yeah get over here rooster you know i can sing to him like that a lot so that's been fun we've been like training them and playing with them all night and so that was amazing um just uh more comics i'm working on next panel press stuff which is our bi-weekly um sunday strip kind of thing um i have a problem where i don't plan at all for it and then the day right before it's due i just slam it all down so i've been using my ipad to to do uh to do it in uh, procreate which has been incredibly helpful getting kind of like i mean it like you've told me before you skip a lot of steps and you kind of you can go right from the blue line to the inking to the coloring all within like a couple a couple strokes so that's been amazing um yeah just getting excited next week on the grendel cast is going to be huge uh, i'm excited for that uh, this is probably our biggest what happened this week of all time why do you say that well because uh, well, first of all, we've got the Grendel zine, which is wrapping up. Oh my God, the Grendel zine. Yes, it's you so want the Grendel zine, listen to Eli. Yes. Uh, well, leave a five-star review for us on our iTunes page. Then email me, Eli at CosmicLionProductions.com to us and send me your address. Frankly, if you're hearing this, send me your address and why you love Grendel and we'll get it going. But a five-star review is uh, the best. What's YouTube comments. Zine? Yeah. Oh, what, what do you think it's, it? what is it? Yeah. What's well, in it, the Grendel zine? Okay. Well, we have uh, original art from Matt Wagner, from John K. Snyder, from the Pander Bros, from Reggie Byers. Uh, we have pinups from a ton of amazing creators that we met through the Kayfabe zine. We have a cover by Ben Perkins that we've teased a little bit. Are, are you interested in doing a cover reveal yet? Uh, just please. for the... Yes, yes please. It's let's amazing. do it. All right. So here it is. Dun, 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 dun. Hey. Yes, it is a tribute to Love and Rockets number one, featuring all the Grendels there by Ben Perkins. Look at that beauty. Ah. Oh. So and sick, in, dude. And we're in it too. No, but yeah. Oh, we're in it too. Yes. Uh, short story by me. Short story by Ben. Um, again, I I reread your story, Ben, the other night while I was working through it, and um, I forgot how great it is. And it it, it thank you elucidates as kind of like the A one story we're gonna read today, which kind of gives like it gives backstory to Christine's husband. Thanks. I uh, I. Uh... I enjoyed doing it. So cool. It was fun. Thank it's you. one of those things like that we talked about. I think we both kind of um, told stories from viewpoints that maybe hadn't been exactly seen yet. I kind of tell a Stacy story that you see some, some events happen that we were like going through when we wrote it. And then Morgan Hickman does an amazing, amazing, uh, amazing. amazing. Uh, a he story. does the same thing where he, he digs into the lore and, in. and does something great we get someone returning from eddie's life <laughs> yeah <laughs> fucking it's so, awesome it's so great yeah so, so like a 30 a 40 page book or? yeah about a 40 page book um i got full some color. new yeah color full color i got some new um commissions too um this one ben doesn't even know about don de soze is doing hey. <laughs> i, I just i spoke stuff. with him too yeah dude he is amazing and and i i asked him to i sent him only reference from Kamiko one, two, and three, because 
his work the manga head you're right a manga head and his work with tones is insane yeah so i was like here's the reference i want you to work with and he's like psyched on it so uh yeah and so that's going to be amazing um i i don't know what else to talk about okay so we're we're finished weenzine grendelzine grendelzine um arcane number one arrived Arcane number one almost in the the hills of pennsylvania yeah it's it's, yeah steel's cabin up in the mountains so that's going to be in shops this week weapon f came out oh my god it's in shops (laughs) jesus yeah this thing was huge came out so good um, I'm very was, proud of my pages. Yeah, you did a great job. This is this is some of your some of your finest work. I and agree. It's a study. That was my intention. I right. wanted to study. I wanted people to uh, dig in and learn, and that's what they did. You know, when I Agreed. one of the things I used to do was was I would take a crappy, you know, loose leaf binder and a big book, and I would do studies of Mike Mignola and Jack Davis and. Um, uh, Mark Schultz and challenging stuff, and you you learn a lot by doing that. It's one of the so three much. parts of drawing, right? Study, figure drawing, imagination. So you got you got to do that. And I think you really learned a lot on this. This is oh, I absolutely did. Like it was a uh, uh, very well received. And so uh, in the last two days, we have filled up all the slots for um, Batman Year One. <laughs> Batman, B A M M A N, maybe. Yeah, Bam, Bama, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's it already has its sick wraparound Tony McMillan cover. By the way, these projects, all the proceeds are going to fund the Make More Comics Arts Grant, mm-hmm. which is a, it's just, it's such an amazing loophole to uh, to do these these wacky amazing projects, projects oh, um, yeah. for a nonprofit that's going to basically make someone's publishing dreams come true. Xerix style. That's so it? great. I mean, we we are prolific. <laughs> We're busy. <laughs> it's a, it just happens to be that this is a very busy week. Yeah. Uh, for for publishing. Yeah. And let's, you've been teaching. You got your students going, and, yeah, and that's I, going I'm gonna well. Teach, I'm going to start. No, I'm going to start my BFA drawing class on Tuesday. Uh, so gonna, every Tuesday, I have a class for that. And I um, man, I'm so excited to do the reading. Read. Readings uh, in this class will include Calvin and Hobbes, Street Angel, Frogs by Steranko, Devil by the Deed, Batman Year One, Mr. I by uh, Louis Trondheim, This One Summer, Marika Tamaki, Box Office Poison, Akira, Buddha, Hellboy, Amazing Screw on Head, Tale of One Bad Rat, The Jam, Will Eisner, etc. So I'm so excited for this class. Wow, dude. I want to take that class. Let's just take the class together. Let's do it. Okay. Let's grundle it up, baby. It's like the devil is my best friend. Hunter Rose with the pen to the fork end. Or to time end. Like Orion. Jupiter, my kin, bloodline private. We control the whole shit. The wolf won't beef, then we feast off the rip. Behold the devil in detail. Behold the devil in detail. All right, we are back and we are ready to get a Grenolin. So we're uh, this A1 book. Here's the cover, man. It, it is very, very good. It has a lot of people in it. Two of like not only having Grendel, it's also got Mobius. It's got Jamie Hewlett. It's got who else did you say? Uh, it's got Delgoda. It's got um, Bojafri Saga. It's, it's got Simon Bisley on the cover. Yeah. Oh, I love the Bisley. Insane feet. Bisley cover. I wasn't sure. I'm my thumbnail is very small. I was like, is that Bisley? And I was like, oh, look at the feet. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's got oh, more. So it's good. got tons and tons and tons of awesome stuff so this was from atomica press right but then i think later issues like it was i don't know what well, i think is. one i think it was british based uh-huh and then they started printing in the u.s and started the numbering again yes through epic yeah, because epic i've got a number of them yeah 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 so uh this is like what an anthology like and some of the other ones have um shoot i'm an idiot what's his name the the guy who did the last the killing joke cover and uh brian boland brian boland uh some of them have boland covers and boland interiors and oh, cool. oh my god 
the A1 series is amazing. Yeah, it's gonna. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I had never heard of this, and uh, I'd never re- I read it for the first time 30 minutes ago, and it blew my mind. Right. Awesome. I read it for the first time this year too, and and we were talking before that like this short story here shines a light on some like shines a different light on the character of Wiggins and adds a whole new crinkle to, to the entire saga to this entire part of the saga yeah we we were talking how Wiggins um sort of Wiggins doesn't have uh Wiggins is a lap dog right. in the panders yeah and he's kind of uh he's the hmm yes truant officer in, <laughs> yes um, from Clockwork Orange <laughs> in, yes, uh, in, in Bernie and in, in this one he it, but he doesn't really have any all of his characterization in in Bernie is through his dialogue is the yeah you know is his, his smarminess right and in this it's just all backstory and like character like reaction cause and effect and yeah. he like comes to life instantly so it's written by uh by James Robinson um it's like his third or fourth project ever in his career right um best known I don't know star like so much stuff uh for devil's one hell oh really yeah mm-hmm, there you go uh, Starman, right? Okay. Uh, big, big Starman. There's a Starman waiting in the sky. Tons and tons and tons of work. Um, and I'm, I'm like, oh, like stuff you uh, Generation X one shots. He did the Generation X minus one uh, book. He did the Generation Ooh. X Gen thirteen crossover. Oh. Lots of Wildcats. He did. Um, uh jsa golden age tons of jsa stuff Interesting. tons of superman stuff um we need to know more about where this story came from and why it's yeah here for sure like... for sure but i think that the one thing that i was when i was looking at um his bibliography is that it's just like such an amazing array of artistic talent that he got to collaborate with right from the get-go i think that i, I don't like the book he did after this one was the Terminator one shot with Matt that I'd never heard of? So good with the That's, fold out, with the flip out. Right, it's flip. got that pop up thing you told me. Yeah, oh, so cool. And the art is by Disraeli, um, who I think he did have a black, white, and red. Yeah, I think black, it's a Stacy right? story. Okay, I don't I remember. So. I don't remember which. I sometimes get him confused with with, with Dean Motter, Devil's Vagary. Okay, but Disraeli is. Uh, I, I think he's like mostly a Vertigo guy. I think I, so, yeah. I don't know. We I kind of feel like we are like we are obviously 10 years too young to for it to really have hit it's, us. It's for the... just like a, it's a decade before right. our time cuz you know, we're Jim Lee X-Men kids. We don't know shit. They, that was what was hot yeah. when we're, I was we're there. catching up on the back end um, here. Yeah, yeah. We're trying though. And 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 a great uh, entry point is the Scrandle stuff. This is a great story. Let's let's jump in. Yeah. I think of Disraeli Gears when I hear that creams album that's cream maybe that's where he got his name i maybe feel like did. there's an interview where they say why disraeli and he's like why not oh, yeah why not why i like not? cream yeah in your I, tea or <laughs> i think also he has kind of a um like a chameleon style thing going oh, it, on kind of like matt where he is, is able to sort of play to the if, strengths yeah. or something of the character or depending on his deadline, you know, uh, yeah, 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 or whatever. Yeah, this is this is a fantastic fucking story. It's really great. Yeah, man, it's so cool. And and we open up on uh, with the newscast. Uh, there's a gunman, John Haig, who was arrested on suspicious suspicions of other crimes. His resistance and the struggle that followed led to Haig grabbing one of the arresting officers' weapons and killing him with it. So this it, the, the setup is like a. Um, a hostage situation now the this guy on lower crimes killed a cop now right no, no he, uh, yeah. other cr- other crimes <laughs> right Just i wouldn't other say crimes. lower crimes yeah uh, it's, 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 crimes, it's a yeah. hostage situation on live tv and the, the newscaster ends by basically saying um all right we're going to continue our coverage by going to the dead officer's widow and springing the news on her you know yeah, like almost okay. like the reverse of a publisher's clearinghouse or something like right right something like that God. uh yeah in let's see the event of detective palo's death being told to his widow after these messages and the guy like shoots it 
so so it's one of those cool kind of like opening shots where we're you know we're seeing the newscast it pans back to the tv and then the tv blows up as this um you know villain this uh guy is Hostage shooting the taker. tv yeah Hague. exactly hey take yeah shoot. it's a it's a really nice transition nice and wide we reveal his uh um his apartment he has a he has a poster in the wall that says like cannibalism it's like it promotes good like healthy gums and teeth it's just <laughs> it's just awful and then we push in really tight on this very well acted disraeli uh two-shot close-up where he says oh, yeah. i'm going to kill you yeah you know yeah. I, I you you will be dead I will be dead, but at least you'll be dead first. <laughs> you brought this circus on me, you and your dumb dead partner, right? Yeah. So they only said t- sent two guys to like cover this, and um, and and again, I feel like this is super cinematic because then it pans over right as he's talking to his dead partner. We go back and pans over to this like exploded head right below the cannibalism poster. Oh yeah, it it reveals and, the first dead cop, and it looks like he's wearing like a a gumshoe hat, which is he definitely is. Which well, is but, like, this is freaking great too because the panel ends but right yeah. before the panel ends you see the wall mm-hmm. and then you start to see the the like checkerboard pattern of the outside then we have the um the panel break and then you see the out the rest of the outside which is like full of cops C-O-P's. yeah it's a, it's a very interesting um like breaking up a background kind of move yeah because at first you're just like oh there's a whole bunch of tangents and they're like oh no that's just one like it's it's not a con it, it's set up like a continuous background but in terms of the physics of it it doesn't seem like it works because i think that that door on the right in the last panel oh. is the is the door to his apartment so mm. there's some there's some disraeli trickery going on we can't mm. uh we can't also not uh compliment yeah, that- the letter this very european style okay. um uh, yeah wabi sabi uh rectangular lettering i love it i like it too yeah and, and you know it's not as clean and clear or whatever as u.s lettering i kind of do that too when i'm doing my lettering like i don't want my letter i want my lettering to look like my handwriting and look mm-hmm. like you know like that it's coming from me no matter you know who's, who's really good at that is um is is alex robinson of uh, box office poison and right and i am food. reading that yes you're that's reading my, Bob. that's my toilet that's my toilet reading it's fantastic yeah it's, it's like it, yeah it's great it's, yeah. it's short spans it's like the dude's life it's like events mm-hmm. that you can easily follow along yeah. i can totally see i think you had told me that you read that like in college in new york city how it's like a perfect it would be the perfect soundtrack i was know, living comic. a block away from where alex lived when he made the book where the characters live in the story. Right. So you were like, I am in this story. I was living, I was living the book. Me. Yeah, yeah. I was fucking crazy. Yeah. And I, I like to think life. of that. I like to like put myself in the, in your shoes when mm-hmm. I'm reading it to be like, you know, in New York. It was, it was my life. It was, I graduated from a school in the city. You were clerking. Working. I was clerking. Yeah. I was trying to figure out how to freelance. And that's what the book, that's the book exactly. is about, um, you know, now that we know how dirty Jack Kirby got done, what are you going to do about it? Right. But enough about that book. And that's yeah, let's a, get that back. Book is another that book can be another podcast. Yes, it's like um, the collections like this thing. Yeah, and props to Disraeli's use of uh, of screen tone. It's a very simple dot pattern, mm-hmm. and he does lots of reduction and uh, razor blading and yeah. highlights and all kinds of cool stuff. Here on this next page, we start with the um, you know the intro introspection of Wiggins, mm-hmm. uh, a bit of a puzzle with this one children raped and murdered all across the city so he's he's talking about this case this crime and uh you know what's going on the arrest team was sent they got sloppy we see all these like super awkwardly helmeted cop guys and they all have very weird goofy ass names yeah it's funny it's really it's really fun the cop guys are always treated with this kind of like paramilitary like goofiness where they're it's like this machismo their shit is too big on them (laughs) yeah yeah but they're like over over um armored Mm -hmm. yet sloppily dressed kind of thing yeah they're slobs yeah (laughs) here's twerp and coffee and sniffy this is straight out of um the hard goodbye uh the the first in city uh yeah like i mean these last three panels it's so sick like you you pan past 
slowly panning past the coppers and then mm-hmm. you see the darkness you see a light and then you see the shiny the shine of like a metal face come out and then you see wiggins's face the dot pattern on his lips you know you're always mentioning how his lips are like different colors he's got weird purple lips he's like yeah. a mentat from dune <laughs> he's drinking he's like the, i uh, hate child killers the, the uh, juice of safu is what brad Dorif uh talks about when he plays wow. mentat Peter debris anyway enough about other things grendel ben focus right ben this is a great fucking sequence i hate yeah. child killers i oh. love it what a great face too it's so um yeah it's it, he does really like i will absolutely check out his bibliography after this this is yeah. so fucking cool it's kind of like it's like it's like a, a, somewhere in between bernie and the panders almost like the the shapes uh are, yeah, are very yeah. pandery but then some of the details are bernie mm-hmm. and the dot patterns you know like i'm seeing a little bit of paul grist look at look at panel one this cop in the foreground his weird hands where the fingers kind of all melt oh, together yeah. in one shape and it's then grisly yeah there, there's there's a lot of cool stuff let's uh let's move on that's the yeah, first next spread. page <laughs> we get the aerial view we see the dirt on the floor we see tons of detail and and here's where we get a little of this backstory of wiggins my and, sister and wiggins, be what Wiggins is straight up Teddy Christensen in this panel with that fucking hair. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah more backstory. Oh, God. My sister would be like, what, 36 if she lived? A year older than me. She was my lookout, my consort, my friend. Then one day... Yeah, his his co- consort something else, his cohort. Oh, his cohort. Yeah, oh, shit. Yeah, that's... Yeah, he's not that way. That, that's something else. Then one day after school, the boogeyman and came and took her away. She was 10. I hate child killers. My takeaway from this was that, uh, you know, when you're 35, you are expected to be middle management. And uh, that is, I, I am both depressed and amused by that idea. Yeah, dang, Wiggins is a year younger than us. He's three years younger than <laughs> Wait, what? He's, How he's old 35. are you, 37? Wiggins is 35. Oh, 35. Yeah, you're right. I'm yeah, bad at that. Wiggins is, <laughs> Wiggins is 35. And he's like leading the squad of killers and like he's just he's given like professional carte blanche to do whatever he wants and like yeah i'm sitting in my basement <laughs> no no we're making books we made seven we're making books, books this week yeah we did we're like come on we're about. making books we got books <laughs> yeah so this is cool and then um the uh the credits box is very cool too because it's it's like they use the logo from the mm-hmm. ongoing series and then yeah devil's whisper and it's like hand done it, it just looks great right again Everything like great. where was this supposed to go like why did they why did why did they not reprint it why is it not right. in the omnibuses right yeah it's it's important it's an important tale mm-hmm. why For is sure. it not in omnibuy maybe they don't going. have the originals yeah Wiggins reflects on devil's legacy christine spar Argent said she had to be stopped so we stopped her we just do whatever the fuck 300 year old werewolf says okay. <laughs> um, but i knew her pain her boy being dead i knew tonight would come tonight i'm filled with righteous fury tonight's uh tonight i get the chance to feel the rage of grendel Oof. and he's got the mask burning in his pocket i wonder if he feels the burning that brian felt like because he says he, he was like talking about he's been having it in his pocket like he's keeping it there almost like as a totem as like some sort of power element yeah. like he feels the burn i think it's i think fake, the fact that he can keep a trophy like that that has so much baggage speaks yeah. to how speaks to his standing within the organization absolutely i mean like, he he was he right there he killed him. Yeah. yeah what if he t- what if he took the mask and no one even knew too you know we don't know well he, i mean yeah that's true he does he he tells these guys He's got 15 guys here and he's like, and they're all like, they're all, you know, trigger happy to, you know, go in there and, you know, be the militia. And he's like, everyone stand back. I'm going to do this. And, you know, he's got the mask in his hand. Oh, hey, okay, great. This is on the next page. He's like, it still smells like his hair cream. You know, the anger, the pain. He has nothing but contempt for Brian. Enormous, ridiculous slurs. I was thinking about the gay F slur um, last night in how, it is so obviously something you cannot say that it has almost been erased from like my memory banks. I was like, oh yeah, that word that no one that like no one has said for a decade. Yeah, it does seem like that. Crazy. 
Yeah. Other slurs don't have that. It, it, it doesn't, it really hasn't worked that way. But this one, it's like, I read it and I was like, oh shit, like, you can't fucking say that. Yeah, it's not even used like it, to, for villains to say in comics or anything or anywhere, you know? Anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. Anyway, Wiggins goes in by himself. Yes, Wiggins, tonight Wiggins hears the devil's whisper. <laughs> um, but and, sir, and then, we can just, and he's like, you heard me, back away. And this is super Paul Gristy. Yeah, super but, gristly gristy. Yeah, so Love good. It. All right, so then he, he, you know, we just see the room as it's happening and blam like this is insane grendel kicks in the door and so for this guy that's what he sees you know and he's freaking out he goes after him he's like oh no 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 sorry he comes in from behind him shoots the guy right in the shoulder and then smashes throws the cop down basically smashes him against the wall yeah i was i think that he's maybe trying to knock the guy out so that he won't he won't so that if he survives he won't say and then grendel came in right they'll be like oh you know you have a concussion you don't and then the next few pages man is just a flurry of wordless action Mm -hmm. uh he comes out with a gun the guy comes out with another gun um wiggins jumps on the ground does a roll and comes up shoots up the thing he runs into his bedroom which is covered in pornography and empty bottles and dirty socks and whatever it's a very big apartment this is a a nice apartment yeah it's a nice new york apartment obviously we think it's probably still in new york and um, so then they can just, he returns the fire. He goes into the bathroom, which is disgusting. Yeah, but I really like the, the door. I, li- I like the shower curtain in the mirror. Right, yeah, that's what a good touch. Detail. Really yeah. cool. This is amazing. Like, like Disraeli in, in six pages has become like my favorite cartoonist of the week. <laughs> yeah, it's, this is such a great story. Yeah, this, the first panel, I want you to look at, um, look at the, the, the forced, distorted perspective on this low angle shot Mm -hmm. um look at this shape you see okay so see where the ceiling and the two walls meet you see the y shape that gets created Mm -hmm. that y shape is what it's all about baby Mm -hmm. that's how you make the space that's why i tell my students who can't draw i say yeah draw a y you'll figure it out okay (laughs) you told me that too yeah all right so um the y's everywhere yeah uh so wiggins jumps over the bed right as he slams the door Next page, it looks like he lights up, you know, he lights up one of his death sticks or whatever. Oh, no, he's uh, he's panting. Oh, is he panting? He's he's panting. This is very funny. Oh, I see. You're... Static. And then Wiggins just smashes through the door. Oh, my God. And the guy <laughs> flips into the bathtub. Yeah. And look at the curly cues. That, it's like Eli Schwab drew this panel. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. There you go. Yeah, those kids. Yeah, this fucker falls into the tub. And he's like, and, and this is very interesting. He's like, I am and then he's like no he like takes the mask off he's like i am not grendel she was my friend i cannot kill in grendel's name this is this is straight teddy christensen yeah it really is this is unbelievable this is oh it's fucking look at the acting Mm, love it so sick the next page is like i am a cop or you think it's it's cop or you think it's his cop i have no idea yeah i don't know I think cop, but that it stands for something, you know. Uh, I'm duty bound to arrest you. And then mm-hmm. his his monologue interrupts him talking. I remember her dark brown hair, her eyes. She was my friend. And this guy is like, I think what the deal with this guy is, is he's so awful and so warped. He has murdered and raped multiple children. He has just killed one other dude. He lives and loves violence. Yeah. Do it. It's like do it and i will you know i will be more powerful than you will ever you know strike me down you know? <laughs> yeah well and i think i think he's projecting the anger too like could this be the guy like they never caught the guy who murdered his sister maybe he's just like this guy's been doing it for a while maybe maybe I, he's projecting I'm, it that, that's your head canon yeah <laughs> and the pro- guy just yes, gets up he's like pro- fuck it he like, projection <laughs> he tries to come at him and wiggins just blast him away seems like like in the last page you see his gun it's like real fat yeah, like, it almost it almost looks like uh, it looks like the Blade Runner gun, yeah. or like the um, when you read Luther Arkwright, which you just showed me your first issue of, it looks like the vibro beam, the vibro beam, the vibro beamer, which which Arkwright uses that does basically this. It just disintegrates. Right, bodies. like it's almost like it's got buckshot in there, just blasting. Yeah, through. he's he's done 
Disraeli has used this sort of hatched striated lighting effect mm. a number of times here on walls, but it's it's nowhere is it more effective here, especially with that white toothbrush oh on God, the yeah. on the on the guy's shoulder. Oh, it's fucking great. So good. Blast them away. I hate child killers. Let me get the Grendel eyes on the wall there. Oh, I didn't see him. To end. And Wiggins kind of he smiles as he does his dirty. He's psyched. Yeah, he's psyched. He's like, he's like, man, I, I'll take care of this. You know, he's he, said. he is uh, a few years away from uh, margaritas on the beach with his pension. Right. And that's what, you know, a few ep- issues ago, that's what he mentioned that he wanted. That's what that's he was what, looking forward to. That's where we'll be in two weeks after our very special episode. Yes. Next week. Next week. All right. So I think for the rest of the ep, we wanted to touch on this little chestnut here. We were going through some of the books and uh, they were talking about, we are in about the fifth year of Kamiko. Yeah. This is the Kamiko Black Book. It's got a wraparound cover. Uh, mine's actually signed by, uh, I might as well just say it, our super special guest for next week, Diana Schutz. You got a great signature, Diana. Who's going to elucidate on not only the history of Kamiko, the history of Grendel, the history of you know, her stuff. Uh, and there she is. And like where we are in the story, you know, having exactly like, like changing, we're about to have a huge first taste of what's going to happen to our podcast over the next two and a half years. Basically. Exactly. Yeah, we're diving deep in until we get to this to, book. Yeah. Oh, Epi. This this uh, can we, first of all, thank you for sending me this. I of was course. not expecting it. It is truly Geraldine Peck's finest hour to date. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's incredibly enjoyable. Like we're not going to go page by page here, but um, it's really fun that there's this like timeline at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Basically, you know, starts like, with primer number like one. Three months per page. And then, it... yeah. And then it jump. Well, I mean, the, the second biggest event in Kamiko history is primer number two, the first appearance of Grendel. Like that was, you know, they not hit the, gold. Not the Christmas party. <laughs> well, I mean, that was a big one too. Can I ask you about this cover? Sure. Yeah. It's really, it's funny. We're, first of all, were the other Kamiko books wraparound covers or just the Matt Wagner books or just Grendel? Oh, I don't know. So that was my first question. I don't um, think they all were. Is this, has this image by Matt, it looks like it's um, colored pencil and maybe chalk pastel. I'm not on black paper. Mm-hmm. Was this reused on like, uh, did he redraw this in ink or reuse it on like the cover of something? It's so familiar looking. Yeah, I think that there was different ver- a different version or like the same type of thing. Oh, I don't remember where, but maybe in like a pinup uh, in Devil oh, by the Deed or something oh, or. Yeah, something like that. But I do, I don't think this was reused, but I do know that like we've seen this shot from a different angle when we talked about it on the show for sure. What I like about this image is that this colored paper or toned paper or black paper with colored dry media is a technique that Matt continues to use 30 plus years later. Yeah. And uh, it looks great here, but he is so adept at it nowadays that it's like, you know, there's you know, the only other guy that does it quite as well as JKS3. And when John K. Snyder does it, if you if you were like, all right, this one's by John Snyder, this one's by Matt Wagner, which one's which? Sometimes it's very hard to tell who drew, you know, there it's so similar. Yeah. That's that uh, family style. Since since I've been communicating more and been talking with John K. Snyder and I really started following him on Facebook, I've been seeing a lot of those pinups and they're insane. I, I love his art so much yeah. more now that I started seeing all that stuff. He posted Refertro, uh Gru's dog today. Oh, a cool. pinup that he did of Refertro. Refertro. I uh, that's one of those names like from comics that I've never. I feel like I don't say out loud like ever. <laughs> I've never said it out loud, but I've read it for twenty five years. Yeah, for sure. He, um, you know, I uh, I had never heard of Suicide Squad like until like five years ago hmm. because I wasn't reading DC okay. books in the eighties. And I did not know that he was one of the key artists on that book. And I saw like some pages, some action sequences. I was like, oh, this looks awesome. Like I could very easily see myself getting it, it just for his artwork. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's great. And, uh, you know, the other guy that created that was John Ostrander. Yeah. Who I've been reading a lot of in this Wasteland book. I got in this. There's this dude, oh, Del what Close. Is that? Well, oh, this dude, Del the, Close. He's the, com- the comedy guy. Yeah. And so this is his DC book. It's, it's, I love it. It's that's, like, that's awesome. It's kind of like one kind of like Tales from the Crypt EC wow. style story. And then there's one like crazy psychedelic story from his life. And then there's like one other, like something else. And the one I just read had um, had Tim Truman in it, made doing some amazing stuff. It's very, very cool book. Speaking of Tim Truman and John Ostrander, if you like that team up, Grim Jack might be a book for you. Absolutely, because the first thing that Del Close wrote for comics was a Munden's Bar story. There you go. Wow. <laughs> I just find it so funny how like here we are closing in on 40, having grown up on Jim Lee X-Men Drek, <laughs> and now we're discovering all this stuff that came out when in we were like it. in diapers, you know, and it's so good. <laughs> all right. So this opens up with the four main original books, Primer, As, Grendel, and Slaughterman. Cool. You have all those? <laughs> so these are, it looks, I, I think I have all these. You, I figured you did. <laughs> these guys are the, are the art school, the Philly art school buddies that started the company. Mm-hmm. And they all had their own books. Is that the that's the pretty deal? much yeah. Slaughterman yes. looks fucking cool. I like uh, I like this uh, this artwork. Yeah, uh, it, Jerry Giov- Giovincio. Very yeah, cool. he's kind of like the main dude for Kamiko. Yeah, um, are, the original um, the original logo, the font is so it's like it's kind of psychedelic and bubbly. Yeah, <laughs> so weird. I love it. I like it. I like how it goes through, you know, like we, we get the grid to the grid panel mm-hmm. all throughout, yeah. which obviously I love the first Kamiko Christmas party. That's what you're referencing. Grendel and Johnny Quest. I mean, that's that's the big two titles. The first ones they decide to go into detail. In. So that must be their first like that must be their two biggest sellers. The, they got they have. a. I mean, listen, this is a legit company that was around for many, many years and sold a lot of books and launched a lot of good ones. It's, you know. But uh, frankly, um, you know, Matt's contributions to Kamiko in, in my head are akin to, this isn't fair, um, Miracle Man at Eclipse. Eclipse had a lot of good books, a lot of them. Yeah. But like to, you know, someone who isn't doing a deep dive on Eclipse, Miracle Man's the only one that matters. Mm-hmm. Um, what I love I about this Grendel, and it took me a while to realize, is that this is a jam between Arnold yeah, and this, Jacob and this, Bernie. Yeah. So cool. This piece is great. I love it. Yeah, you can see there's um, the uh, the white screen tone. Mm-hmm. It's getting a little, little more a effect. A little bit. Hey, Very cool. So All right, so Matt says, with this series, I hope to continue a long examination of what I see as one of the universal and continually inexplicable conditions of life as we know it. Aggression. Aggression. It's everywhere you look in its variety, in its varying degrees. And sadly, its abundance would seem seem to far outweigh that of its neglected brother, compassion. That is very Ooh, interesting. That is, is that's a theme that we're going to the duality between those two things. Let's put that in our thematic uh, pocket. Yeah. And we haven't seen the anti Grendel, which is the spirit of compassion. Yeah, come yeah. Out yet. <laughs> Inter- oh, that's it. That's, yeah. dude, that's short story. Interesting. Yeah. yeah short story. <laughs> well, it's funny because Matt's like, well, may, Matchstick and, and Grendel will never meet. I don't think Matchstick is the spirit of compassion. He's just, he's no, just, you know, compelled goodness. Right. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Summer. Anyway. He's got, with, he's got good green magic. Grendel's got good, he's got the bad red magic. With that theory in mind, I also hope to push and expand the borders of the medium. Absolutely. Definitely did. And provide a showcase for what I see as some of the hottest young talent that the field uh, can produce. Okay. Done. This series done. <laughs> this series <laughs> began by introducing the initial comic work of the Panders. Yeah. This young pair, this this pair of fourteen year old artists brought a, <laughs> a style and flair to the book, entirely removed from my so own. Good. And this was and is exactly what I'm looking for. Very cool, Matt. 
I want to see the Grendel that lives in others and not merely a, re a reworking of my own visuals. And now that's an idea that we also haven't seen Matt say, because when he talks about it, he says, he'll, he'll say things like, well, you know, if I'm going to have someone draw the book, I need to let them do what they want to do. You know, I, otherwise, I'm, I should draw the book, you know. Right. It's a very, it's a very um, like anti-control freak kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, forward fronting. Not that, not that I think Matt is uh, that controlling, but. Um, well, but if, nice. but you have your own character and you have this creation. Yeah. You are, well, you are allowed to. Well, you find people that you want to work with, that you vibe with. Right. that you actually you don't enjoy to. what they're doing. You know? Right. Yeah. You, you, how many people hire artists and make them redraw stuff and, and, and beat them into not wanting to work on the book right. anymore? Even Kirby experienced that on Superman and you know, different stuff. Absolutely. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's, so the Panthers yeah. wrapped up with issue 12. The banner is taken up by Canadian artist Bernie Moreau. Bernie sees a different Grendel altogether. Oh, they describe, he describes, uh, the pandas were beautiful and la lascivious. Okay, great. Um, Bernie sees something different altogether. He brings an incredibly fresh essence to the book. And so Grendel will continue. Hopefully we will present a new vision regularly while remaining true to the initial concept of the character. Or is it force? Both. Yeah. Sick. 87. Hey, uh, man, that's, that's a very prophetic, honestly, because all yeah. the goals he put forth, he did. Over the course of the next 25, 30 years. 35 years. Yeah. It's crazy. Really, really well done. Really, okay. yeah. Good on you, Matt. That's great. It's so cool to like look at that. I pulled out this quote for the Grendel Zine too that um I got from the intro uh to the Grendel archives where Matt said, never falter and never look back, except to see how far you've come. And like, you know, th this is exactly what we're doing right here with this little piece. Absolutely. Next him up is the Johnny Quest ongoing. Mm -hmm. by Written by William Bill Messler and Lerner Lopes. All right. Mark Hempel and Mark Wheatley, have you ever read their Vertigo book, Heartbreaker? No. You must read it. I wish I had it right here. I might have. It might be behind all my paperbacks. It is. Whew. Um, you know Mark Hempel from Tug and Buster and Sandman fame. Uh, okay, he did yeah. the thickest ninth volume of sandman it is called the kindly ones oh super cartoony um i feel like we were in our in our community and someone was dissing it and they were like it's the weakest visual sandman volume i was like you must be you must be crazy, crazy. <laughs> like, it is the best <laughs> cool dude uh so this is showing february 1984 the last black and white grandel number three and then the first mage one mm -hmm. month before your faithful narrator was born. Oh, there you go. This uh, you old and... yet, Matt, and Diana? I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're all no, you should. We're all young. We're, we're all, all young. yeah. We're all well. We're young at heart. For mm -hmm. you know, justice are... machine is next. We were talking about that last time, but I haven't really read that very much. All right. So I read the. Uh, I read Mike. So Mike Gustovich's name is very familiar. I feel like he went on to do a lot of DC freelancing. I, hmm. I'm not. I'm not sure. I guess he. I guess he's writing and drawing the book. Yeah, this it's like a team book. He said, "Like it's all right. It is. Uh, it sounds really fucking stupid, um, but nothing is stupider than this guy's costume with the exposed nipples. Like what? What? It's a cowl. Oh, the over big his tall shoulders, guy. And then oh, a, my God. a strapless dress that only comes up to his rib cage. <laughs> well, it looks like two of these guys have exposed yeah, nipples. The star so guy." And then the oh, woman man. has what? just, there's just circles over the center of her bosom. Wow, yes. So, Interesting. Uh, so this is about um, a group of alien superpowered beings who are fish out of water on Earth. And they come from a planet called Jor Jorowell. Jorowell. A, a 1984 type planet. So maybe there's a good book, but uh, mm. I will not be. I mean, parts of the logo are cool. I don't know, whatever. Great. On to Mage. Yes, obviously. The uh, nominated, nom, nominated for a Nebula Award, the first series of the Mage trilogy reflects author Matt Wagner's own growth and is his finest work to date. I, I did know. not know about the Nebula. Ne this is, this oh, is and this Matt. poster is Matt Wagner and Sam Keith. The, oh, this is by Keith. Keith inked it. It's a One thing that I, 
I want you to I want you to read the rest of this Matt quote. Um, but the thing that I love the most about this is uh, first of all how intense Edsel looks. Like she's never. Oh, yeah. I feel like there's a few panels in the book, especially when Keith comes on, where she has like rage, where, she, where her acting is crazy. Yeah. But um, what Sean is that his name? Mm -hmm. Sean the ghost. His hand acting with his glasses, like that is a very like consistent mannerism that he does which right so the real guy must have done that like yeah, how matt said the, well matt said that is based on his real friend of the same name oh uh, yeah so that must have been something that he was always doing you want to read the rest of this quote upon discovery sure upon discovery of the fact that i modeled very specifically the hero kevin matchstick to look like myself i am often greeted often greeted with this rather idiotic reaction gee Guess you always wanted to be a superhero, huh? I say this because, in fact, who doesn't? And by that, I mean, who doesn't dream of having some extra normal effect on the world? Who wouldn't want to be a hero? The truth is, no one. This is the point to the first stage of the Mage Trilogy. Our power to affect the world, coupled with our desire to do so. In fact, as Kevin learns, it is very often our inactivity that makes villains of us. It's apathy and despair that result in a painful death and effort and growth that bring a healthy one. Kevin is simply my aesthetic mirror, the same one we all have. So who wouldn't want to be a hero? Maybe only those who already are, for they are so very alone. Maybe Kevin Matchstick. The story continues in Mage 2, the hero defined. Sick. Matt, you are well-spoken, sir. <laughs> I, I, I very specifically remember a span of about 30 minutes when I was about 14 standing in my driveway, basically imagining myself as what would become the character kick-ass. I was nice. like, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm gonna move to the city. I'm gonna get some fucking tonfas. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, well, that's like the stupidest. Yeah, <laughs> but, I got but I wanted jujitsu. I need. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I really love this image. I love the uh, I love like the watercolor on Kevin's um, on Kevin's face. Yeah, and like I don't recognize this image either. It's not the cover of a book or a trade or anything. No, I, I it it's some promo image maybe done specifically for this yeah for awesome. the over you know there are certain overachievers in this company you know right well I then think that, oh, i think also that um maybe mark mark hempel and mark waitley all well yeah like right because like bernie and the panders put this image together it would right. seem oh well, maybe they did and stuff just for this on the johnny quest one like the opening line is uh, johnny quest sleeps beneath the mosquito net and the image is of him beneath this mosquito net. Oh, right. And it looks like what they did was they had a actual net and then they airbrushed. It does look like that. Something, yeah. something like that. But, you know, it's very, very cool. All right, cool. So then we get to the Robotech Master stuff, which which was pretty cool for them. They got like uh um they got the rights to publish this anime, effectively helping bring uh anime manga into a to a united states audience which i think is a, is a great thing that they did yeah certainly one of the first ones i think uh again eclipse might be mm -hmm. might have been a few years ahead of them with uh kamui area 88 and oh. my the my the psychic girl oh and oh, this are, are fucking awesome by the way yeah those are good those are good and this Robotech, the new generation, was actually penciled by Reggie Byers as well, who we oh. have uh, in the Grendel zine. So he's a he's an old friend of the an old, an old head. Yeah, I have no idea what Robotech is. I don't know what the fuck. You know, I have a few issues just because I kind of tend to grab Kamiko books, mm -hmm. but. And then we get on to Star Blazers and the amazing Fish Police special. Well, it, it's kind of cool because it's broken oh, up you, into like regular you, series. You skipped the series. Doug Widely Johnny Quest classics. I did, dude. Doug anyway, Widely. those are probably awesome as well. Let's, those let's are an amazing those. cover yeah. artwork. Bob Shrek, yeah. you know, that's another big, uh, you know, um, like a, what's it called? Where they, where they get the rights to something, you know, license, Johnny Quest yeah. was, was, you know, huge cartoon. Yeah, um, but they had the original creator. Like, right, come and do it, which that, I think he did, never he did, happens. Yeah. Well, he did Rio also. Yeah. His name is Rio. Do you want right. to read? And no, we don't want to read anything about Fish Police. Anyway, Fish Police exists. 
right great on the next page we got the great the uh gumby summer fun special always uh a, a great fun on that one arthur adams early work honestly mind-blowing when you think about arthur adams doing gumby summer so good winter fun rules summer fun is less good in comparison to it, <laughs> in my opinion yeah the i agree they're, one, they're both fun but they're both great the winter fun comic is like one of my top 10 favorite single issues of all time oh it's, it's so good incredibly enjoyable i love it look at this ken stacy robotech cover yeah that's sweet that's the noise ken stacy oh my god that airbrush coloring yeah, too he is so fucking good Next page, Kamiko's first five years brought together many talented creators who delivered their best. I mean, you look yeah. through this. It's a murderer's row. So Yeah, exactly. Murderer's row. Yeah. Starting with Arthur Adams and we, wheeling its way through everyone you could want out of the it, 90s. There's so many incredible 80s and 90s. Absolutely. Yeah. Bill Sienkiewicz, John K. Snyder III, Ken Stacy, Alan Moore, you know, Rich Everybody. Rankin, Remo, Adam Kubert, Sam Keith. Mike Kaluta, Harrison Fong, Chuck Dixon, Every, Alan everybody. Davis. Just insane. It's absolutely yeah. insane. The, Mike like Barron, the Steve only Rude. person who's not in here is Neil Gaiman because he hasn't broken in yet. Yeah. Like that's everybody. Very it, cool. It, it's amazing. Yeah. Right. And then we continue for the Kamiko collection with this very cool. Uh, this is kind of like the cover, but like inverted. Mm. Uh, this is you know, Bob talk talking about how that how that came about exactly right uh we got more fish police now they're talking about graphic novels that the the kamiko collection was a specialty item so while this is great a great history and a reflection it's also um like a sales tool it's, it's kind of like their, yeah. their their catalog but i gotta tell you this ken stacy fish police cover like looks awesome so awesome stacy's got good. some bomb work man yeah Next page, we get Ginger Fox, which is Mike Barron's work. We got an intro by um, Dinah Shutt. Oh, and the Panders. Mm hmm Right? I don't uh, know. No. It's not. Um, illustrated by Mitch O'Connell. I think huh. they went. I, I must no. be confused. Yeah, I'm confused, too. Because I, I think the maybe there was, a second, there was a second run of Ginger Fox, maybe, that they did. It's a, it's a fashion book. It's basically right. it's Mike Barron writing Barbie. <laughs> yeah, is, that, is that what it is? I think. I haven't read it. Let's, let's not... just read what Diana says. Superheroes lured me into the wild and wacky world of comics, but let's face it, so far as adolescent power fantasies were concerned, well, I was never a 15-year-old boy. What do women really want? I'll let Mike and Sigmund take a stab at answering that question. What do well, I Mike want? Barry, you know. I know, yeah, what women really want. No. And finally, some choice on the racks. Yeah, so it's a, at least a female hero, and, and at the time, it was still a, a, a strive forward for, for female heroes. <laughs> I okay. Mo Let's not talk about Mike Barron on the Grendel podcast. Let's talk about Grendel. Let's talk about Devil Grendel. by the Next D. Next page. This is the announcement. Oh, and oh, here even Alan Moore. Alan Moore is part of the last spread because he wrote the intro. Exactly. Yep. For in Grendel. <laughs> let me let me try. In Grendel, Matt Wagner does things with comic strip design that are pretty much state of the art. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> You Maybe think he's like, like that? He's more Cockney. I, I, I don't want to brag. My Alan Moore is pretty good. Okay, let's, that, let's hear. It. An, Go ahead and read. I, if you're gonna brag, you gotta back it up. I'm going to, I'm going to brag, but I'm gonna do it with a different piece of text. So this is the voice of the fire. <laughs> That's a good one. Dog fingers suddenly withdrew from and in between the loved one's thighs to cut between their own. The lips part shackled only by a silver chain of spit. <laughs> Shank off. He is in here. Shank off and leave us be. Shank off indeed. That is I good. Think I, and they, I used to be better. <laughs> that is good. He's great. All right. So let's read this from Matt. When I originally, or you want to read it? Please. I, I, already, I already read it. All you, right. you, feel, feel free. When I originally created Grendel, I envisioned an exploration of the differences between good and evil, or I should say, the lack of difference. What? I was ooh, there's so in line many, between love and there's hate. So many in, like thematic insights just in this like right. throwaway like promotional catalog. 
Like that's why I wanted to read you can it. Work, work this stuff back into your your interview repertoire. This is good stuff. Yeah, and into short stories, you know, kind of like. Um, okay, um, I was and am a believer in the actuality of many shades of gray, as opposed to the surety of a black and white world. I soon realized that my villain was far more captivate, captivating to me than the monster I had birthed to be his opposition. This was how I stumbled on the fact that what I was speaking of actually was aggression and the undeniable truth that this ugly condition is to be found absolutely everywhere and under absolutely every face. When it came time to reweave the story I had begun in Primer 2, and continued in Grendel's own initial and short-lived black and white title, the villain had truly become the important factor to me. As I already knew his end, I made the effort to further the persona and have it stretch above and beyond the story I was then telling. And so Christine Spar was born and Grendel's future ensured. You know what I realized uh, is that Jocasta is Oedipus's mother. Which we mm. which we've never mentioned. I think right. that, I think that's the case. I agree. A I feel like when we were type. talking about when we were talking about Jocasta, we were like, "Oh, she's Agamemnon's wife." And I don't know what that is, but or something like that. And um, I realized this week that she's she's Oedipus's. Thus the thus the fourteen year old uh, you know cougar kind of thing. Right. Great. Okay. Awesome. All right. What a book. Here's Rio. Looks nice. Ah, yes, we're always talking about Rio. Did you I get did it? get it, but I didn't read it yet. You don't need to read it. Look at the pictures. Robotech and, again. And oh, here's, here's another Ginger Fox, this this time by the Panda Bros on the next page. Oh, that's Ken Stacy again on that Robotech? That's, this is probably his coolest image in the whole Man, book. The, yeah. the one with the cockpits is cool, but like the warm colors in this one is... He does. He's got some great cover work going on. God. Does he? What does he do now? Like, What has he I done know. since Spawn number one? He just took the money and... <laughs> No. Ran. he's he the must, only one that put his kids through college off he must have worked for the last 30 <laughs> years but i don't i don't know doing what no i don't know either covers he's, probably he's a beast it, it might it might be a style that it, it might wow. be a style that you burn yourself out on because it's so right intense this is interesting this this on the next page of future product projects uh we do have the next incarnation of ginger fox mm -hmm. yeah and, and this is by Mike Barron, but he says, I started thinking about Ginger when Diana Schutz was still with the Telegraph Wire, asking the musical question, Cherche la femme? Excuse my French, but that means where are the women? So that's interesting. Diana, Diana's effect on the comic book world cannot be understated, for sure. And we'll get into that more next week. This is cool. Jezebel Jade, Andy Kubert. So he got his start, you know, yeah. old cubes. What what is this Jezebel? This is another Bill Bill Messenger Loeb's book. All right, mm -hmm. cool. And then on the next page here, we have another very cool image and the start of Mage Two. Yeah, it's going to come out in uh, the summer of '89, give or take. Uh, in exactly, the summer exactly. of '89. This is cool. This this painted image is this from the one of the interlude. I don't think it's where, anywhere. I don't think it's anywhere other than here, man. It's like. It's like kind of in that stuff. You know that interlude story where he's in France with the mm -hmm. horse thing? I love those interludes. They're beautiful. Where where were those printed? Where? In Grendel? Like I think they're, they they came out as minis or something like that. They came out as like promotional mini comics. Mm -hmm. I, 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 love, I mean, I didn't buy them off the racks or anything. <laughs> I love the I love this uh proto mage 2 logo. It's it's really fucking cool. Yeah, it's definitely like uh pen it's like a brush stroke like a, a very yeah. uh, well if you look at that triangle gauge. it's a it's a horizontally distorted bolt oh shit you're right yeah very cool who's paul weller he's yeah, got the I, quote here oh he's from the jam not the, the oh the band the, the, the band, jam the oh jam. you're right yeah better stop oh because this is the, the um, that's the town called malice yeah yeah this right. this might be this might be the song there's a that, song that opens up that the... opens up it might so okay so the first one's the jam the third one's elvis costello it might be the second one it might open up with it might be the uh, okay got one. it I'm not, i don't know very cool i don't know anything about the jam i know about the jam because it's a mage right the band the jam right 
All right, then we got this Max Headroom book, which I don't think ever came. Oh, no. I don't think. Night and the Enemy again, Carlin yeah, Ellison yeah. and Ken Stacy. So, Ken yeah. Stacy. Oof. Killing it, dude. Let's let, let me read this cuz I cuz we keep talking about it and I I want to figure out what it is. All right, so uh, <laughs> this is by Ken Stacy. This is Ken Stacy, not Carlin Ellison talking. Oh no, I'm sorry. They both speak. Right, yeah, yeah. Pardon me. Okay, so first I'll try to do my Harlan Ellison voice. <laughs> Bill Shay. And I and I am doing I I have a private student who's 11 and he's he um only reads Harry Potter and his mom said you got to get him off Harry Potter and I said let's give him Ursula K. Le Guin and I have uh, uh, a Wizard of Earth suit and I have an audiobook written by Harlan Ellison and the kid is obsessed with it nice. when Ellison does audiobooks he like whoops and hollers and shudders and stammers and like adds all this like great acting flavor so let me ask like, really Shakespeare stuff I guess read the Xerox and pages of his new play not tonight, Aparagnia. I showed him Ken Stacy's artwork for Night and the Enemy, and he was overwhelmed by it. He issued forth the Gardley Do and turned to Chuck and turned to Chuck Dickens and Jeff Chaucer and Frankie O'Kafka, uh, with, with whom I was playing a little poker, and said, "How does uh, what is uh, would wouldst thou would that would that they <laughs> with which I tarry." in fields of color have severely severed my muse as prismatically. We all said, right on. And understood how upset Billy still, still seems to be from that awful John Byrne graphic album version of Macbeth versus the Justice League and Shaken's Hamlet blood nod. I guess I can't ask for a better testament than that. So I am content with Night and the Enemy. Now, if I could only fill, fill to an inside street. So basically Harlan Ellison says, that Nothing William about Shakespeare book. says your book is awesome. <laughs> cool. You did not get any info on that. But let's we'll, we'll find one. I got one. Well, for... It's very good. The info is that the book is very good. It's very good. You, Ribbit you by Frank Stacey Thorne. Impression? I don't know who Ken Stacy sound I like. <laughs> I never had much uh, difficulty visualizing the, paint, the printed word, but few writers activate my mind's eye as readily or, as, or with such acuity as my pal Harlan. I knew that someday I would illustrate his work. When the opportunity presented itself, I leapt at it. This is, there's nothing here. All right, Harlan's very sensitive. He's a, Harlan's a great guy. Okay. Dude, um, but the next page, we get the Rocketeer Adventure Magazine, another beautiful graphic here. I think I have this. I have some. I have I some. Have, uh, I think yeah. I have this. Um, what's Ribbit? Oh, Frank Thorne. That's cool. What's he do? Frank Thorne uh, was a was a uh, Red Sonja artist, I believe. He was a fantasy mm. a fantasy artist. Nice. I like I love this like boombox thing they have in the background. It has like a strap. It's got like a bicycle handle on it and stuff. This looks very cool. very uh, Jamie Hewlett. Yeah, I might yeah. try to find this rivet. And then finally, Space Ghost by Mark E. Van Neer and Steve Rude. With colors by Ken Stacy. Obviously, obviously, he, Ken is all I, over I, the shit. Yeah, man, they must have. He he was, you know, Matt's the uh, Matt's like the architect, uh, and and the workaholic, and Ken Stacy is like the workhorse. Yeah, like, just go, you know, Bob must have had him wrapped around his finger or something. Like that. At least he hopefully was getting good money, and well, hey, I even. Hope- Bob Panaha gets an invaluable assistance on this project. Thank you. Ah, very nice. Thank you, Bob. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a very good letterer. So uh, very good why, letterer. Why? Why wouldn't he get? It? So I hope that after reading this, you want to go and buy a bunch of Kamiko books. I, yeah, I really. I do. guess I do. Yeah, I want to find. I definitely got to get that Night in the Enemy in this. You really do all these books. Maybe Rio. May, uh, the Maze Agency, I think, is a book that um, may have been through a few publishers. Mm. Possibly so uh, many of these some of these books did live on night and the enemy was republished too and obviously yeah. mage and, and some i think of these other i think things, i but... said idw but i think it might have been nbm oh terry, really terry mandier's or whatever his name is i mean i don't know and and we're looking forward to more matt reprints and stuff um you found something online that there's a reprint coming soon i think there's a new edition of behold the devil coming in september that's or, what uh, like. uh, next September. I don't know. I don't. We'll see. Uh, there is. Matt, is that true? 
Matt will know. Will, Matt will know you're listening to this podcast if you <laughs> if you reach out to let us know your new book is coming. Out. Awesome, man. All right, so yeah, we're gearing up for next week's big Diana Schutz interview. We're going to talk about the history of Grendel, where it's been, where it's going, the pitfalls, the possibilities, the perils, and the promise. Wow, that's Back that to the Future too. That should be exciting. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm really excited to, to get, get a one-on-one uh, interview with Diana and really dive in because she's been everywhere that we want to, that we want to know about. So, yes, I saw, I told you last, last night that I was a group, a Facebook group recommended to me was a 550 person um, like comics editors group. And I clicked this to see what was going on. And Diana was there um, just like, setting people straight it was, it was great i loved it <laughs> i loved it too man i'm excited um yeah it's gonna be great to chat with her she's been an amazing help with the cast as well very supportive and very helpful and um i someone i truly truly respect and am excited to chat with well don't anything don't say, else save, for save some for next save week some of the know? adulation for in person no that's it that's it um uh, my uh my mom, my mom's here taking care of the baby. I think that when the baby goes down, um, we may do some tie dyeing in the backyard. So yes, all right. <laughs> Try to get a Grendel logo going on. Make that a, make a, that is uh, that is something I could try to do. It's, uh, in order to do imagery, you have to. I don't really know. It's well, maybe you could cut out like a, a stencil, and then after you tie dye, just like splatter the stencil with some like black yeah. paint or white or something. The tie dye podcast is another project. Of mine. This is Grendel. All right, welcome back week. to the Tie Dye Podcast with Ben Grandel. <laughs> All right, John. Yeah, Viva Grandel, and keep on.